Okay, at 6.30, let's call the September 7th meeting of the Sawyer County Health and Human Services Board to order. First action is roll call. Dale Schleter. Yeah. Tweed Schumann. Here. Dale Olson. Here. Chuck Van Etten. Here. Ron Pettit. Here. Lorraine Bouget. Jennifer Babornik. Carol Pearson. Here. Sabrina Dunlap. You have a quorum. We have a quorum and certification and compliance with the meeting laws. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. Okay, we all have the agenda before us. Are there any concerns or changes necessary? Okay, then we'll move right on to public comments. Everybody? Okay, Dale, Dale needs to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Dale, you want to make an oh Yeah. Sorry, Dale, go ahead. I, I can, Mr. Chairman, or you can. We, we spoke earlier. I apologize. I had a close contact and I don't feel comfortable being at the board meeting tonight. Otherwise, I would love to be there. I think it's important that we be in front of our folks that we represent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dale. I had a note to make that announcement for you, and it's right here in front of me, and I still missed it. OK, public comments. Has everybody who wishes to make a public comment read out one of these sheets? It looks like I have two online. And two online. Okay. Uh, we'll give everybody three minutes. Please stand up here or Zoom. Uh, state your name and your address, and we will give you three minutes to speak. No particular order, just the way I got them here. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yep, right up to the mic there, ma'am. Thank you. Can I start? Sitting okay or must yeah. yeah. You can start. Hi. Oh, oh, one second. Trying to read the forms. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Sherry Bingen. I live in Winter in in seventy one forty two County Road B in Winter. Um, last Friday morning, we held a coffee in the parking lot of our beautiful Waldo Senior Center in winter to assess the level of support in keeping the center open. I'm delighted to report that we had a great turnout, around 40 people in spite of the predicted rain. We are here to show that the winter community wants and needs the Waldo Senior Center. We are here to speak on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves. We are going to ask the Senior Resource Center Board to number one, please reconsider the vote to close the Waldo Senior Center. Two, open the center to serve meals made in excellent until a cook is hired. Three, as long as the rent is being paid, allow us to use the facility for visiting, playing cards, exercising, and other things. Four, we could do fundraising, but without the center being open or having a person in charge, that is a challenge. Please help us move forward in a positive way for the seniors in winter. Thank you for supporting the Waldo <coughs> Senior Center in winter. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Arlene Albears and I uh, live on Browns Road in Loretta. And I just want, wanted to, uh, after our event on last Friday, we became very aware that there's several individuals in the Winter Draper area uh, that are interested in volunteering. 
And as Sherry mentioned, we know that the rent is being paid there. The suggestion is that uh, of letting some volunteers uh, be responsible to open the center, uh, you know, maybe two or three days a week, like say from 10 to two or something, the people could order their meals, have them delivered and eat at the center, socialize with their friends and neighbors, um, play some cards, and maybe we could again and enjoy the exercise uh, classes that are offered. Um, and then the volunteers would be responsible to uh, open it up, clean it up, you know, close, lock up. Um, we wouldn't be using any of the cooking facilities or anything like that. Um, and if that, and one other suggestion that I have in regard to possibly opening it is we have our advisory board member from the winter area, Brenda Adler, maybe she could be responsible to open it up for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike O'Mara. I live in the village of Winter on Canistorf Road. And a couple of years ago, I found out there was a need for drivers for Meals on Wheels. So I volunteered. What I found out was they were very short and became a regular driver probably about two years ago, pre-COVID, which put a lot of wrenches into the, into the mix. But what I noticed on my route was, for one, a lot of these people are low income and have really poor health. So a lot of times that meal is one of their only ones that they get probably at least for that day. But what I noticed that's related to this topic is I was contacted by numerous people while on my route that asked if there was a possibility to open the center. And they felt not that it's the food so much, but they missed the fellowship, the socialization. And there were numerous people <coughs> that I had never delivered meals to. For example, there are a couple of elderly apartments, Galaxy and Winter Haven, and several of those people while I'm delivering say, is it gonna open? When is the senior center gonna open? Because they miss seeing their friends, playing cards. They miss that even more than the food is the <coughs> social get together. And a lot of our elderly people, and it's become very aware with this COVID issue that a lot of people get more depressed. They don't get to see their friends and, and the people that they normally socialize with. And I know that's still an issue. You know, we gotta be careful and, and mask up. But the other thing I wanted to just add was the reason I got involved a couple of years ago was our Alliance Club. The winter, I'm a member of the Winter Area Alliance and they're very active in community service. And like Al, um, Ms. Alvarez said, we would probably be willing to volunteer if we need whatever it is, fundraising or um, cleanup or special projects, whatever it could be. Um, I don't think our Lions Club was aware that it was in such dire straits that we might even lose the ability to have the senior center open. So that's just the thing I thought we could explore too, is, is have groups that would be willing to help until we could get maybe a cook or someone hired on. But in, in my feeling, the big thing we're missing is that I that ideal way to have people socialize and talk to their friends and have a meal together. I know a lot of them play cards and do things at the center. I know there's a lot of people besides what get meals on wheels that would come to the center if they could socialize and have that. So I think that's important. And I, I would like, it would be nice if we could reconsider and find a way to open the center again in winter. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll say something. I've got three on line two. Uh, Joe Bodo, 17368 University Drive, Winter, Wisconsin. You know, I've been working for the county. I'm here as an individual, obviously, resident of winter. But I've been working for the county for a long time, uh, since May of 88. And it seems like it's always a struggle to get services down in that end of the county. Uh, you know, uh, and this is just another example. There are, there are a lot of seniors down there, and we shouldn't lose the senior center. Uh, Mike hit the nail on the head. 
we have a lot of people that with this COVID and the social isolation has created a lot of issues for people. They need support. You know, we see what happens with mental health and it, it just seems like an abomination not to be able to have that center open, especially when so many good people down there are supporting that center, you know. You know, I think that if for some reason they don't want to open the center, then maybe they have to look at opening a, a private entity and take all these seniors from down there off the rolls of the books that you're using for federal funding or whatever. You know, when I got hired here, there was a pet program in, in, in Hayward. And that program served only Hayward. But they used all the data to count how many kids there were in the entire county. So when I got in charge of that grant, I said, how the hell are you running a program in Hayward to help young people and you're using the data for the whole county? And when I pointed that out, they said, we need to have services in winter. And we ended up opening a pep center down there. We, I hired Pat Sanchez. Her husband became a late Mike, became a great guy, became a fantastic employee of the county. And now she's the head of emergency government because we brought services down there that weren't there. We shouldn't have to fight for these services. We deserve this stuff. You know, and I, I hope that our county board of constituents from the southern end of the county and the ones up north here can support this. I was very, it was very impressive to see Ron Buckles there. And there were 40 people there. And he, he was very supportive. So please consider offering some support to this entity. Is that everybody here who wanted to speak? Sophie? Can you be on the line? Yeah. All right. Uh, Joyce, you have the floor. All right. Dee, how about you? Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. I'll start over again. I'm not, I agree with the speaker so far, but I have a few things to add. David Waldo Ed. stands for w Winter, Loretta Draper, and Ojibwa. Joyce, Joyce, hold on. Can you state your name and your address for the record? Oh, sorry. I did that when I was muted. My name is Joyce Nuffke. I'm at N4440 Price Dam Road, Winter. And I'll start again. Waldo stands for Winter, Loretta, Draper, and Ojibwa. It's been active over 35 years. I couldn't trace it much farther back than that, but it, it may have been active. And I agree that what we need is, is socialization. When we get our takeout meals, uh, we appreciate the Meals on Wheels and the takeouts, but places like um, Connors Lake area, Loretta Draper, they probably wouldn't drive to town and get a takeout meal when it could be 20 to 30 mile round trip. The socialization, like uh, Mr. Marar Mar said, was, is very important. I live alone and it gets a little, uh, it's good for my mental and physical health because I, otherwise I talk to myself or Alexa and she doesn't listen. <laughs> Older Americans Act provided Wisconsin $9,143,995 in February of this year, just for congregate in-house center meals. <laughs> we need to know the amount allocated to Sawyer County and the amount used or budgeted for Southern Sawyer County. I believe I speak for everyone we say we love our current center. And if we had some costs, maybe we could figure out solutions like they said, volunteers and everything to have it remain there. But we have to think out of the box too. Racine County has partnered with restaurants to prepare meals. Maybe we need to look at something like this with local restaurants or even the winter co-op. However, what we need is the support and cooperation from this board and Hayward Resource Center. Thank you. All right, Dee, you're next. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, I came in slightly late because the power has been flopping out here. I live here in Sawyer County and I live out north on off of 63 and I'm a senior resource, um, Sawyer County senior resource board member. Um, none of these concerns 
and none of these people have ever been to a board meeting. Now I've been on the board since the fall of 2019. We've had Zoom meetings since the pandemic began and we still do. And anyone is welcome to join in. But I have seen no one from the winter area other than our board representative, which is Ron Buckles. And the whole time I've been on the board, there's been issues with not a lot of people showing up at the senior center. And there has been issues with, you know, we, we don't ask people to pay for meals, but we do accept donations. That helps keep us going. And that's, of course, part of the in-kind that we have to do for our all of our grants and such. And it is difficult to provide a meal of eight to ten dollar value when people contribute nothing for it. Even a couple bucks would help. But there seems to have been very little interest from what I've seen in the time I've been on the board from the winter area. There was a meeting this earlier, um, about two months ago, I think it was, within a month or so ago, with the Lions um, Lutheran Church there in winter, offering to provide a place for people to come. And the seniors, or the resource board would provide the meals to serve. And everything we heard about that when word got out that we had met with them, or some of us had met with them, was, well, they're not going to that building. I don't know the reasons because I'm not a lifelong member of Sawyer County. I've been here for oh, over 25 years, but uh, so I don't know all of the basis of the issues that seem to keep coming up. But my concern is if you can't come to the Sawyer County Resource Board meeting and explain your situation and voice your opinions, then why are you going over and above the board and going to the human um, health and human services board. And then, you know, I've heard some talk of, of going to the, the supervisors meeting, county supervisors meetings. Start where you should start with the senior board. Come, come to a board meeting. Our next one is next week, Wednesday at 515 at the senior center and it can be, you know, accessed via Zoom. So my concern is you're jumping in the middle of the way it should be done. And we know that there hasn't been all that much interest that's been expressed down there. Now, maybe among each other, but we haven't seen a lot of it, which is why we haven't been able to, you know, we took the vote last month to go okay, ahead and Dean, close the Dean, center. because you three minutes. All right. You got your three minutes, so. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Johnson. Hello, my name is Gail Johnson. I live at uh, W8644 Deer Lane, Ojibwa. And uh, I would like to first off say to D, D. Judd, uh, you know, it'd be nice to attend those meetings, but I've never been able to find the dates and times and the Zoom numbers. Now I got the information for next week, Wednesday. Uh, I hope I can find the Zoom information because I don't like to drive. We have to pr protect our climate. So I'm trying to do Zoom most meetings, but there is a lot of interest in the winter area to keep the center open hopefully get a cook there as soon as you can find one. And if you increase your wages, I think that would help. But volunteer help or having the restaurants uh, cook some of the food might be an option. So uh, definitely uh, keep the information open to us, more open than it has been. It was even hard to find out the names of the people on this a, B, C, R, B, whatever board, because you can't find anything. So thank you for listening, and I'll be look, look at, listening in at the rest of the meeting. Thank you. One more. 
person who has Jewel as their name on Zoom. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but you got a good show going. This is Ron Pettit from Winter, Wisconsin. I live at 5191 Crawford in Winter. Uh, three real quick things. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, have been for 50 years. I would say kudos to the people who are talking about a good meal and socialization. It definitely helps mental health, decreases depression, mood disorders, etc. And I do believe in the long run, it keeps people out of nursing homes. Number two, I and Dr. Ray, who works at the high school, are very willing to write grants. Uh, I think it would benefit the entire organizations. We're good at it. We're experienced. So that's number two. And number three, I would just uh, add kudos to what the other people have said about volunteers. There's way more volunteers here than you might imagine. Some of them are, 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 are hiding out, but we know who they are, and I believe we can recruit them. So there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, one more, because they just keep talking um, Jim Reynolds. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can. My name is Jim Reynolds. I'm with my wife, Sharon Reynolds, here. We have a residence at 5736 West Winter, uh, Lake Winter Road. And uh, we're right now between two homes, but we're going to retire very soon in winter. That's going to be our home. And I wanted to share with the board that I feel and my wife feels that it's important that we have a place to go to get to know new friends and have a meal and maybe play some cards or some fellowship. So like I said, um, that we, we bought that house in February and uh, we've remodeled it. We're making it our, our home. And we're gonna, we just wanted to share that we feel it's important that there's a senior citizen citizen and we'd be willing to uh, uh, volunteer you know when we're there too it's you know help out as we can that's all I got you got anything to share oh thank you thank you uh -oh. Someone put their hand back up. I don't know if they want to hear it again or not. No, Sorry, it was done by accident. Okay, well, that's it for public comments. I want to thank everybody. Appreciate you coming up here. We'll move on to. Consider approval of the minutes from the previous Health and Human Services Board meeting. I look for a motion to approve those minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any motion passed? Reports. Is Lorraine available? She's not, sir. Pardon? She is not. Oh, she's not. Okay. I want to run through the committee reports. Joey Johnson on it. Senior Research Center. Joey Johnson is on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Joey. I missed you. Please go ahead, Joy. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, I just want to make one comment. I want to piggyback on what um, D. Judd said earlier. Um, people need to come to um, our Senior Resource Center Board. Our next meeting is September 15th at 515 at the Senior Resource Center in Hayward. 
in the upper level in the dining hall. All the information has gone out to all the site managers, all the board members with the Zoom information. What we've always done is all of that information goes to the site managers and the site managers are to post all of that information for the individuals in their different areas um, to access that information. But if you can't find that information, you can always call the Senior Resource Center at 715-634-3000 and myself or the secretary or any of the other um, employees at the Senior Center would be more than happy to give you that information. Um, as far as the nutrition report goes, um, the numbers are still going up. Um, Excellence numbers for the month of August were 361 meals. Winter's meals were 427 meals. Stone Lake's meals were almost 800 and Hayward's meals were over 1,500. Um, average donations for meals are $1.87 to $3.82. The suggested donation is $5. Right now, um, the average cost to provide a meal is $13.13, according to the state information that we received um, on Thursday from GUAR. All of the money that we receive for all of the meals, those donations automatically go into Title III funds, which provides the meals for the home delivered and the congregate meals. Um, congregate meals are happening right now in Hayward, Stone Lake, and Excellent. I want to clarify something about the congregate meals. Right now, there are congregate meals. After a participant comes in and has a congregate meals, there can be a limited time of socialization while they're eating their meals. But after their meals are over, that's it. There is no card playing. There is no games, anything like that. Because right now we are still under the plan that we presented to GUAR and that we presented to Health and Human Services in Sawyer County, because we are still under the guidelines of COVID. So if it so for example, Stone Lake, it's one or winter, it's wonderful that you want to do everything that you want to do, but we have to follow our plan. And right now the plan is home delivered, carry out, and congregate meals. It does not include games, socializing after a meeting. We have certain rules and policies that we have to follow per public health and the state and GUAR. Okay. We still have the job openings in Hayward. We still need an assistant bus driver. We need um, a part-time bus driver. We have a part-time janitor right now. Stone Lake still needs an assistant cook. We need a site manager for winter and we need an assistant cook for excellent. I also want to um, also let everyone know from the winter area that there are 57 meals that Janet Excellent has to cook and serve tomorrow. Anyone that calls tomorrow before nine o'clock will be told that she cannot provide them with a meal because of the number of people that have called in from winter for a meal tomorrow. If we would have known ahead of time that Jen was gonna have that many people calling in for meals, we would have ordered more food for her last Friday. Unfortunately, we did not find out until today that Jen has to prepare 57 meals by herself. We did find someone that can go in and help her tomorrow to get those meals out. One of the excellent participants will be going up to winter tomorrow to help deliver those meals up to winter. And all of those that receive a meal tomorrow at winter will have to fill out a congregate meal form that we, we need at the office in Hayward to put into our SAMS program in order for us to be reimbursed through Title III for the money for their meals. Okay. All right, um, fundraisers, we've had three, um, Barbecue cookouts that have raised um, over $3,000 for our bus here in Hayward, along with the other donations that we received. So we're over $30,000 towards our new bus. We have the car show this Saturday, September 11th at the Sawyer County Fairgrounds from 10 to 1 that the Senior Resource Center is um, putting on. The fundraising committee um, of our board is doing that. Um, there'll be the car show, um, there'll be food provided by Smoke, um, Smoke and Ken and Trinky, 
We'll have food there. Um, there'll be a lot of, and music. Um, we've been doing Bingo on the Road. Um, Bingo on the Road will start again at TNT on October 4th in Hayward. Um, this summer at Red School House Wines, we um, did over $4,000 um, for bingo and all that money will go to Meals on Wheels. On Sunday, I received a check from the Phipps Motorcycle Fun Run um, in the amount of $5,061 with a total of for Meals on Wheels this summer was $9,061 that will go towards Meals on Wheels countywide. And that's what I have um, for our report this month from the Senior Resource Center Board. And again, I remind everybody that our board meeting is September 15th, next Wednesday at 515 at the Senior Resource Center in Hayward, upper level. Um, if you need Zoom information, please call the center and we will provide you with that information. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just kind of end it up here. <coughs> Go ahead, Tweed. Okay, <laughs> Joey, this is Tweed. Yes. So, so explain to me what is going on right now at the winter center. I see that we need a site manager and an assistant cook. Do we have any applicants? We have had hearing from these people that the rent is being paid. Yep, we so are. What is actually going on there? There's actually nothing going on because we cannot open that site until we have a site manager. We have had three people apply for a position, not necessarily for the winter um, site manager. Two of them um, went in the pile that you know didn't meet the criteria for the job. One person might have met the criteria, but they did not call back, nor did any of their references call us back. In order for us to open up that site, we have to have a site manager. That site manager has to be trained. It's approximately two weeks um, of training, and that training is done by Carrie Lobitz, who is our site manager in Hayward. It's not just, um, can you cook? How do you cook? This is how you cook, but there's a menu that has to be followed. There's the book work, all of the accounting things. So it's, it's a training that goes on for at least two weeks. And if they haven't had the serve safe certification, they have to do that. And they have 90 days to get the safe serve um, certification. So in order for winter site to reopen as it was in the past, we would have to have a site manager and it would have to be they would have to be trained and it would be between three and five thousand dollars to reopen that site just to put the supplies in there that were needed and you have to have more than a site manager there i hear a lot of people talking about that they want to volunteer that's wonderful um, but there's a lot of things that have to happen before the doors of that site can open up and as I said before, when the site opens up, that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to come in there at nine o'clock in the morning and sit down and play cards and have coffee and socialize. We have to present our plan for winter to Sawyer County Public Health, and it also has to go to Guar, um, to Sarah and to Pam, who are at the state level, to okay that plan before we can open. The other thing to realize, each site has a different number of people that can go in there to eat based upon the square footage of their room and the kind of tables they have. So for example, if you have round tables, you can put three to four people at, at those tables and they have to be six feet apart. That's what we do. So then that also limits the number of people that we can put in a site at this time. Because as everybody knows, we're in the red in Sawyer County right now, unless something has changed since the last time I looked. Okay, Ms. Pettit, you go ahead. Mr. Chairman, yes. is there someone My else? My questions on? would be yeah, to Ms. I'm on, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. My questions would be to Joey. Um, first of all, I'm also one of those people that live in winter and I have volunteered at the center in pr prior to 2019 and did help out many of the seniors there. My take on this, which cause it is my, my district, not my district, but part of winter is there's been a lot of, uh, back and forth. Um, I can tell you myself has gotten onto the senior resource center site and the information is not there and the seniors should not have to call the center. Some of them cannot 
no one should have to call a center within Sawyer County to get a Zoom number. It should be posted. If you're posting your meetings, it should be posted. But if there's no site director, my next question would be to Joey, how did the people in winter get that information if there's no site director and the doors aren't open? If it's not on the website, because I've looked. And I also know there's been no ads run for any jobs in winter through the Gazette. So my, my issue is, again, we're the Southern end. Let's just keep, in, keep taking more. It keeps taking more. We're going to end up a ghost town. We will end up like Loretta Draper. There is nothing here for anyone. There is nothing here for the children. There is nothing here for the seniors. I am 51 years old and I've been here for 14 years and I have not seen one thing for the kids here. Not one thing, but I, I know how much are, how many, uh, there's an LCO, there's other things available for children up in Hayward. There is nothing here because no one will come here and invest money into winter and open a business and go bankrupt. There is nothing here for our kids. There is nothing here for the seniors. So take the senior center away and there's nothing for them. Maybe we need to make the senior, senior center look out of the box as several of the people have said and look to do something with the school to get the people out gardening with the kids. We have the community garden. There is many things that can be done. You look at Flambeau, you look at Ladysmith. There is many things that can be done to provide services to the seniors within the southern end of the district. I cannot, there is too many people here in winter for that center to close that are going to need meals. The elderly population continues to grow in winter. There's not many young families coming here because again, no services, no transportation, no nothing. Our grocery store is going to close up and then you're gonna tell me people that don't drive are supposed to come all the way to Hayward for a meal. That is not going to happen. I, am, I, I called tweet about this. I did not get a response back. Not an email, no nothing. Joey did not say anything to me. We sat in the meeting the day before and the vote was taken. I find it very disheartening that we had a meeting knowing that they were going to have a vote the next day and that was not brought up in this meeting at all. So now you look at, because everybody got together in winter because no information is going out to the public in winter. We get nothing, nothing from Hayward. We get nothing down here. It's not posted in our paper. It is not at the site. There's no one at the site. So how do we get it? And then you're going to say there's no Zoom number call. We're, it, we're the 21st century, are we not? No one should have to call that center to get that number. Not even me. I got online looking for it and cannot find it. There is, there is no way, again, this is, has been my thing. We're going to put the courthouse through, pay for it by capital. But once again, another service is going to be taken from the southern end of the district. I had kids last year that could not get Wi-Fi, still will not get Wi-Fi, that could not do it for the, due to the pandemic. They're, they're at home on lockdown. We go to lockdown again, or I'm in the same situation here, and my phone's going to ring off the hook. Again, we get, short, we get shorted on the southern end. I am so perturbed and disheartened at what is going on within our county. There is a complete divide. It, since I've become on the board, it, you can see the divide. I'm very adamant because I came from my daughter's volleyball game. I had to listen to constituents call me today. Once again, I've listened to constituents and directed to Mr. Buckles, but me and him are all, and Mr. Peters are only three people. And these individuals have no idea to go to because once again, the information, you can't find who's on the board. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Carol, go ahead. I just get, was going to ask Joey, are you still there? Wait, like Carol? Hi, Joey. I just wanted to know where the jobs for the southern end of the county were posted and how they were done and how long it's been going on. It's hard to believe that we could not find at least one or two individuals that could be trained to help with this situation. So where, where are the advertisements for these positions placed? Okay, we have advertised um, 
on Indeed. We have advertised on our Facebook page. We have advertised with the Gazette, but what happened with the last ad that went in and Sue apologized to me, I faxed the information to her and she missed the fax. So that's why it wasn't posted the last time in the Gazette, but it's always been, we did, we've done the Gazette, we've done the Sawyer County record, and we've also done the Lady Smith paper along with Indeed and Facebook. So we have had it out there. Unfortunately, the last time that everything was faxed to all the newspapers, Sue did not get it, so it did not go in the papers. And as far as our webpage goes, unfortunately, our webpage is not where it should be because our former board member who passed away, Troy Morgan, was working on up, do, was up, was upgrading our face, our webpage. But unfortunately, when he passed away, so did all the passwords and all the information. So we are right now trying to find someone else who can get in there and redo our webpage. Unfortunately, um, we send all of the information to all of the sites. Jen is responsible and excellent for giving whoever is taking the meals up to excellent, taking the information for the meetings and posting it at, at winter. I can't control if it gets there, when it gets there and how it gets there or whatever, but everyone has been instructed as of today when the agenda went out and the Zoom information went out and the minutes went out that these have to be posted at their sites. Sue at the Gazette will also be posting all of the information, the Zoom and everything at the Gazette. So if it's not posted at the site in winter, it will be posted at the Gazette. She has assured me that she would do that for us. Thank you, Joy. Mm -hmm. Bill. Bill Olson, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, jo Joey Johnson, known you for 30 years. Uh, you did not take this job willingly. You raised your hand when somebody was needed. And I thank you for that. And I hope everybody else thanks you for that. Because by gosh, that is, that's an impressive thing that doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, excellent seems to be doing so well. And winter may be a little less. But by gosh, when I watch the news uh, with my one station that I get, people are getting a lot of money to stay home and not work these days. And I think it would be a travesty if we shut down winter uh, just because, you know, we're paying people, what, $1,100 a week to stay home. I hope that we can find money in our county budget. I don't care about the senior resource budget. In our county budget to make sure that there is not one senior in winter that goes without a meal that they wouldn't want. Because isn't that what we do? That's exactly what we're supposed to do. So thank you, Joey. You're awesome. You've done everything for us. Uh, just saying we we need to make sure that this doesn't go away. Thank you so much. Okay, any other questions for Joy or comments from the board? Okay, thank you, Joy. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Joy. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, now maybe summaries, Paul. Nothing as administration, so you want me to do adult long term care. There's a report submitted by Lori Perlick for your review. I'll highlight a couple of things. The ADRC of the North hired a new dementia care specialist. Um, and also, the state has a rolled back the requirements regarding face to face meetings. And so, with the support of a public health officer, or probably a guidance from a public health officer, or suggestion, um, the ADRC of the North Hayward branch is. Um, postponing face-to-face -face meetings unless the protocols are followed so they can do that here, like coming into the conference room via Zoom and that sort of thing. Um, we're also looking, again, to replace uh, a part-time information and assistance specialist. And we also had a APS half-time specialist uh, resign 
And uh, we're not sure if we need to replace that person pending adoption of a guardian policy, which is being reviewed by a court counsel now, and hopefully soon come to the board. All right, moving on to behavioral health. Um, Alicia Carlson submitted her report for your review. Um, we're still looking for a mental health therapist, and we're also now looking to recruit a CST coordinator. You also have a report from Mr. Joe Bodo regarding um, behavioral health placement update for your review, and it's a three-paragraph report, which I think you can pick out points, uh, one of which we have one person in Winnebago right now, and if that person was placed outside Winnebago, it costs us to two to three grand per day for some other facility. We'll just add one thing, the crisis context has already started rocketing up. I don't know why, when I wrote this report, I said they were down the crisis context, they're starting to increase. Okay. The bigger question is why they're going down, that's the crisis. Probably. And you also have your mental health uh, cost by clients uh, that Cindy Hannes puts together every month. Review. Child Protective Services, we also have the Substitute Care Report. And then we have the um, economic support. And you can see that. Um, Yeah, they continue to do well on the call center and application process, scoring very high. That's it for those. Any questions for regarding those reports? Online? Okay. Public health, Julia, are you there? I am. Good evening. Oh, okay, so our report for this evening, all about COVID again. Um, we are up to 2,000 cases, uh, 2,000 plus cases for the county. Um, and uh, this is the county risk level map from the Harbor Global Health that we see every month that I come forward. We are in red, and um, this kind of gives you the the kind of the time over since we've been having cases um, and um, we're at 30.2 per 100,000 right now. Um, when it comes to community transmission through the CDC, um, this is done, um, I, and I should have repeated, on Harvard Global Health, we are looking at a seven day average of cases. And when we look at CDC, they do a seven day total cases. Um, and when we look at it per 100,000, we are over 200. Um, that has dropped just slightly, but not much. Uh, so we're kind of sitting pretty even there. Um, we are looking just a little bit better on our testing positivity rate, um, which is at 9.62 at the moderate level. And this is the map um, of Wisconsin right now, as you can see, every county except for two are in the red. Oops. Um, some of the other things that we monitor um, as we look through, uh, just to give you kind of an indication of where we're at, um, this is part of a dashboard that we look at um, probably a couple times a week. And one of the things that we look at is disease control. And so what that means is really identifying positive cases and connecting with them um, as quickly as possible and making sure that close contacts are connected with. And right now, um, we are actually doing very well in our county. We've been able to maintain our uh, contact tracers and um, we're able to attempt to get to them very quickly. So we are in the green as far as that goes. When it comes to testing, this is an area that um, we are in not so good shape. Um, I did just move us to orange this week. Um, it's sounding like some places are, it's taking a little bit longer to get testing. We don't have um, a community testing site. We used to have National Guard down in winter. Um, all of that capacity has closed down. One of the things that we're doing is um, we've been working with the state for the last two months to try to be a community testing site in Sawyer County for the health department. Um, and 
it's gotten pretty slow and we're hoping that we're gonna be up within the next week or two. One of the reasons why this has taken so long to get up and running is um, the lab that the state had contracted with for community testing have um, very quickly been kind of overtaken by all of the testing and they did not have the capacity to take on another testing site. So we are actually, they developed a new contract and we're going to be going on with one of the new contracted labs. Um, it is a lab that um, I had seen used in the past. So um, I'm hoping that they continue to give the good service that they had before. And we will update the community as soon as we have answers on when we can get started. One of the other things we look at is hospital capacity. Hospital capacity can change from day to day. And the information that we look at is through the North western air northwest area of wisconsin and we have and you can see um, the maps there of the different counties and that is a health care uh, emergency readiness coalition or the herc which you usually refer it to and that's the region that we're in that we that we would typically send patients to um, the difficult part is, you know, we do send patients to Duluth as well, so we, it, it's a little difficult to get a true handle on where things are at, and then we send patients to the cities. And then this um, bigger map or bigger graph in the middle is really looking at the hospitalized patients per day that um, have been diagnosed with COVID, um, patients that are on the regular units and patients in ICU are in the lighter color. Another, another um, number that we can look at directly in the um, Wisconsin Hospital Association does post these things daily um, at 3.30. And uh, so when we look at it, or when I looked at it for today, um, there's about 13% of the beds that are readily available and only 1.4% of the ICU beds available. And what that means, um, because this is a interesting concept that people don't understand is there can be a lot of beds in a hospital, but you don't necessarily have staff for each one of those beds. So what the hospital association does is they look at the number of beds that are available immediately. So if we needed to send somebody there, would those beds be staffed and would, they, we, would we be able to transfer? Um, on the call today um, with healthcare, in the hospital, it's looking like we have not had as many problems with transfers as we had in the last previous weeks. Um, the total number of patients, um, I get a weekly report from the HERT coordinator, so that is what these numbers are. So in April, or excuse me, the beginning of August, we started out at 27. The following week, we went to 47 cases. And then we're kind of steady at 63, 64, and then 72. And then the hospital capacity for the Twin Cities, I get that updated weekly on uh, Monday, or excuse me, on a Wednesday. And um, Twin Cities is typically in the red. We really do struggle um, with hospital capacity there. Um, just a, I showed you this last month when we looked at the number of different variants that were out there. Um, and as we can see for the last few weeks, we are definitely seeing Delta. The other thing that people have been asking for is an age distribution of cases. Um, this, these are cases by onset date. So the August data right now is fairly preliminary. Those numbers could change a little bit. Um, what happens is we get a case um, that is sent to us as a positive case. When we go and we talk to them, we find out when their disease onset started. That goes into the electronic record and that can um, change the, the onset date. So we might have a few more cases um, that will be adjusted back into August, but this gives a preliminary preview between July of 2021 and August of 2021. Definitely a rise all across the board in cases. Um, I don't think this was available for our HHS meeting last week, but I did, or last month, but I did show this at the county board meeting. I uh, just wanted to um, include this again that we're for the month of July 2021. We definitely are seeing where more people um, who are unvaccinated are getting COVID versus fully vaccinated. I do expect to see these numbers going up a little bit for fully vaccinated people. Um, one of the things is, is we're, we are not invincible just because we're vaccinated. 
Um, so making sure that um, we aren't in really large, um, close set areas without masking. Um, that is one of the ways that people definitely are picking up COVID if they're fully vaccinated. And um, the numbers have changed just slightly with the vaccine tracker. I think um, as I look through the numbers, it's about it's up about two percent um, from what it was last month. And then the final thing I have on the slides is really our next steps is to increase the testing capacity. As we we are working very closely with the healthcare systems, um, looking at how we can will support it um, as a community site at the health department looking with the hospital and the clinics on how we can support and potentially get more weekend testing in as well. So we'll be meeting this week. And then we'll also, we're preparing for booster shots. Uh, we did send, it's not approved yet, just so everybody knows, um, but we did send out a notice to all our volunteers and we have a pretty good number of people who are willing to come back and help support this effort when we need to start our community clinics again. Okay, that is it, any questions? Okay, Julia Tweed here. Yes. Um, did health did Health and Human Services receive any money through the rescue plan like we did last year with the CARES dollars? I mean, you're going to have more testing, contact tracing. You're getting ready for the booster shot. <laughs> did you get I'm your actually, own money? Uh, we have we have money, but um, we're busy talking with Patty um, and looking at um, all of the opportunities that we have along the way. Um, and uh, one of the things the state did recommend to us is that we do make sure that we potentially reach out to the ARPA funds that we got with the county. Um, vaccine, the amount of money that I have for vaccine uh, got reduced. It's not as high as it used to be. So working through that with Patty, hopefully next month we'll have a better picture. I should be getting some contracts for some additional dollars. Um, so I get a really true sense of where we're at. So right now we're, right now we're good. We just want to make sure that we keep a good eye on the future. And then Julie, I got one more. Has there been an antiviral medication that's kind of risen to the top as far as um, attacking this or showing a win against this virus? No. <laughs> well, and, and, and I just say that because I forgot to put this one in here. Um, right now, the, the Vectrin is a, a drug that is something that people have been buying um, online. It is a drug that's typically used for treating uh, pets. And uh, we do use it occasionally for, um, you, for some types of diseases that occur, um, but it's usually in things that um, are like a foodborne type of illness that we can't get to go away, and sometimes that seems to help. But it's not one that we want people to be using, and, um, and don't be buying things over the counter or online that say that they treat COVID-19. If you need treatment for COVID-19, there are some good treatments that hospitals have. Um, BAM is one, and, and I forget the, the long name for it, but it is an IV treatment that you can do outpatient. Um, if anybody is not feeling well, they can go in for outpatient, have that IV treatment. It works very well, um, but um, that is, one thing that we want to be very careful about is the ivermectin, and um, we want to make sure that people are not using that inadvertently, thinking that it is a treatment for COVID. Okay, Carol. Hi, Lynn. Um, my question is about the booster. Yes. Do you have any idea when that's going to start, and what is the protocol? Do you call your doctor? when you know your eight months are up or? <laughs> <laughs> it's too, it's, Carol, it's a little too early to tell you exactly what that protocol is going to be. Um, we think it's going to be that potentially it's six to eight months, uh, six months or longer, eight months or longer. What the, doc, what the offices have done right now is um, anybody who is due for that third shot, remember last last month we talked about the third shot for those people who are, who are immunocompromised versus the booster. So all, all of the doctor's offices have notified or the providers have notified anybody who is eligible 
eligible to receive the third shot. When it comes to the booster shot, we will do um, a lot of advertising. Physicians will be reaching out. We can also go into our system of people who have received vaccines and do a push notice out to them as well. Um, but we'll, we'll probably have even some advertisements in both of the papers so people understand what to do because I have a feeling it'll get quite confusing and quite crazy by then. Thank you very much. Yes. Go ahead, Dawn. Julia, uh -huh. have you contacted uh, the clinic regarding or the uh, LCO Tribal Governing Board? Um, Indian Health Services, which uh, puts through their funding, uh, and I sit in on those meetings, has given them uh, where they could call in for FEMA for testing or vaccine clinics if we are in need that, in, of, of that. Additional? Yeah, and I don't understand if that's the ca case within the community why we would not take that uh, action. So L LCO does have they are providing community clinics and they are doing quite a bit so and they are using the funding um for that they're receiving to help with those community testing it is just becoming overwhelming it was enough that we could that everybody was able to handle it um at this point we are so close to being up and running um having fema come in t does take a bit of time i was looking at that as well today don um because i did see that as a funding source uh, they typically look at fairly large sites to come into based on past experience. Um, but if we, if we are not going to be up and running um, within the next two weeks, that's probably going to be something that we're going to have to look into um, just to get us through. Um, but by the time they come, we'll probably be up and running. <laughs> that's the issue. But thank you for sharing that. Anything yeah, else? Anybody else online? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Julia. Budget performance reports, purchase services. Any questions? Listen, I got a question for Tom. Tom, it came up that um, the Winter Senior Resource Center possibly could be funded by the county. What is the chance of that and where would that money come from? And I guess where does the money come from for the Senior Resource Center to find, fund all those sites? Do we, is there a county, the county allocation? Does fund the Senior Resource Center to a certain degree. Uh, it's kind of a convoluted um, uh, relationship between the Senior Resource Center and maybe Paul can help explain the, the relationship between what the what the senior resource center provides uh, county services uh, to what they do in there. I'll address that, Paul. Well, the part I can address is remember that the county is responsible for the aging unit. The aging unit can be within the county. Another option is you can contact contract with a private agency. The senior resource center is the county. The county decided to contract with them to provide the aging unit services. But the your question is, what are the funding sources for the aging unit? I don't right. know what those are off the top of my head. I don't know if they're they not fully it. sustainable, right? I mean, we do support them, you said, to some degree. Has that been pretty consistent year in and year out? Tom, will we help them with? Yeah, they, they hand over a budget to us and make a budget request uh, to the county each year. Some of their funds are federal, different grants and so forth, different programs. Uh, some of the funds are through the state of Wisconsin. War is in control of that. Uh, it's expected that the Senior Resource Center will hold its own fundraisers to continue to. The more money they get, the more services they can provide. Uh, the services that are being provided in winter right now, first of all, winter has not been shut down. They're just not doing congregate meals or no, we're doing the congregate meals. We're still providing staff 
to oversee card games and socialization sessions. Okay, anything youth justice? Pardon? Who would have a report on youth justice? I'm gonna have, I, I will need a report on youth justice for the youth justice closed session. I think it's after youth justice. Closed session? Wait, yeah. hand, one, Mr. Chairman, I just got one more question for this purchase service recap. Patty, how are we tracking with our budget this year? And I know we're probably halfway through, over halfway through now. Well, this is a report through July, but you're, um, of course, some things you actually have seven months worth of expenses for, but the Mendota, Winnebago, there's four months worth of expenses paid as of July. There are three months behind in the state billing us. So out of a 600,000 that we budgeted, we've spent 418 through 743. Um, also, um, the other key areas that we've talked about in the budget for 2022 um, and brought to your attention is under um, child welfare, family services, the foster care, RCC. They, um, this is one month behind, so you're going to see six months worth of expenses. And um, on RCC, we've we budgeted $650,000 and we've already spent 495 almost in six months. Um, on Foster, you're seeing the same thing, which we're about half, we're about halfway there on that. And Foster Admin, we only budgeted $50,000 when we spent 37, and that's six months in, so you can figure that that's gonna be another 40. So, um, but, I know that Julia is bringing in, like I said, with COVID more grants and we try to, we try to maximize everywhere that we can. So to try to mitigate overall our budget, it's not going to be mitigated totally when you're looking at those big ticket items, but we're trying to do our best. Thank you. Dale, you wanted me to explain how it's related to youth justice? Okay, all right. Sorry. Um, this is it's not a closed session yet. I got to explain why it's a closed session. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I accept it. And, well, North, Northwest Journey is the program on the other side of the Oasis building. Okay. Right. Yeah. They contacted me and Tom, they wanted to meet about, about what the plans are for the building. They have a lease with us, okay? So I think the nature of this, that discussion, nature of our meeting with them is probably better served in closed session because it's related to a contract and lease and that sort of thing. Okay, I thought there was gonna be a discussion on the youth justice program and then we would go into closed session. No, we no like like an oasis. We talked about oasis we had under youth justice because that's okay. typically where it was. My mistake, sorry. Okay, so I'll make yes, so I'll make that motion, Mr. Sure. Chairman, to go in a closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute S period one nine point eight five one and E for the purposes of deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties the investing of public funds or conducting other specified public business. Motion. Second. Is there a second? Second. Gross made a second. Roll call. Roll call vote. Dale Schleter? Yes. Preet Schumann? Yes. Dale Olson? Yes. Chuck Bennett? Yes. All right, I'll let you go. John Pettit? Yes. Carol Pearson? Yes. Ms. Pettit, did you have something you wanted to say now? Yes, it's about the Senior Resource Center in winter. Ms. Johnston uh, called me, that was who, and I had told her just for the information to me. 
as I had asked Miss uh, Joey about the ads in Sawyer County, in the Sawyer County, uh, the Sawyer Gazette, County Gazette in winter, there were no ads placed in 2021 20, 20, and 2020 for any job openings in winter. The only job opening that has been passed, posted is the one she just sent uh, this week or last week to Ms. Johnson at the Gazette. Ms. Johnson never apologized to her. Um, and she, the conversation she said she will, she's going to post it all on Facebook and all the messages and the emails that went between her and Ms. It, with Joey. And that uh, she never did anything wrong. Anytime she has gotten an ad from her, she has called her on what it was and that she is extremely upset that she was put out to make it look like she lied or dropped the ball. She's not happy about it. Um, she did interview Miss Joey, I guess, over the weekend or last week sometime, but she wanted the board to know that there were no ads placed for anything in winter for in the whole 2020 and the whole 2021. For any openings, there were job postings put through the Gazette that were for Stone Lake, Hayward, and Exland. And this, my fellow board members, is exactly what Mr. Buckholz and myself are up against. I don't know what the issue is. If, it, if we need to, if Winter needs to take their federal funding and uh, go on their own and, you, and close that center, we're paying rent for that center. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, I understand with this being a site director, but we can take our federal and state money and we can go on our own and close it. And the, the other thing is there's a food shelf building that's open for sale on Blair. Uh, from, from Blair, it's on highway, it's on highway W and we could put satellite offices in there and have a senior center down here, just as we do in Hayward. Cause I can guarantee you the population down here of elderly is greater than what is in Hayward. We have, we don't have a bus. We have nothing. And you've heard other people testify from our community that there is nothing here for them. We have no transportation, no nothing. So Ms. Johnston, Johnston wanted everybody to know that the, that conversation did not take place. She did not apologize and she is furious. And she wanted the board to know that and she will gladly uh, I can forward the uh, post or she said any one of the board members can contact her at the Gazette office in winter and she'll be gladly speak to you about what has been going on. And she is, Ms. Johnson is the Chamber of Commerce, one of the Chamber of Commerce for winter. She sat for many years. Um, I think she gave it up this year because she was so disheartened about what was going on in winter. But this is what, again, I'm, we're up against down here. And I don't know what the issue is or why anybody would not speak the truth on what is going down there. I know Joey has done a great job getting it out of the debt, out of the red, but we can't have this going on. And I don't know what else, you know, if we have to implore them to remain open or if we just take the federal and state funding for winter and open our own site and, and do it and buy something down here but something has to be done and we have to do it as a board. We can't shut down a system, a system here. Uh, not on the agenda, Mr. Chairman, and I think it's time that we uh, adjourn. My motion is for that. We have a second. We have a second. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 aye.